Get ready for round two of hilarity and hijinks. Yusato is back with even more unconventional healing magic antics in part two. However, they must also imprison the woman who got out of the armor, as the commander will decide her fate. Rose soon enters the scene as she approaches Yuzato and takes him back to the camp since the battle has calmed down a fair bit as they will deploy more soldiers soon. The news of Dark Knight losing gets spread into the demon camp, and Amira is shocked after hearing that. Also, it wasn't Rose who defeated her and some boy wearing the same uniform as her. She orders you, Glurk, to call Balzinisk back after deciding to retreat with the army, realizing that Sigrus is still alive and well while they don't have a healing magician. They notice the heroes coming face to face, prepared with their weapons and magic to face their battalion hod on. Meanwhile, Yuzato gets busy healing the injured soldiers on the battlefield that got carried into their camp. Rose was quite proud of him for fulfilling his duties of saving the heroes from the demon army, and the appreciation coming out of her mouth made him cry with happiness. He finally lost his conscience on Rose's shoulder when the tiredness hit him as he was worn out from the battle. Yuzato woke up after three straight days but the end result of the battle was quite great as everyone in the rescue squad came safe from the battle. Moreover, the celebration and happiness after the temporary victory against the demon army spread throughout the country, proving the value of the rescue squad. In addition, Yuzato gets a medal of honor to prove his involvement in the battle, saving many knights' lives. He was shaken by the suspense when the event went down, and he soon gets called by the king again. On the way, he gets greeted by the commanders bowing down in front of him for his help in the battle saving countless people's lives. But Yuzato claimed they were still living because of each other in humbleness, which amazed the commanders. Yuzato was called in because of the demon woman who was captured by the knights when he defeated her and revealed that she gave in quite easily. Not only that, but also, she has given up a lot of valuable information to them, which might help them in their next move for not being loyal to the demon army. Her only condition for future help was to meet with Yuzato and she was extremely persistent in making her point. Yuzato wonders what she will tell him since he was the person who took her down, and the Knights of the King needed the information on the Demon King's army leader's magic type, so they didn't have any way other than complying with her. Yuzato couldn't help but agree with their proposition, thinking there was no other way of solving the problem, and Suzun came along. He thought that the armor on her had broken up permanently, but he became concerned after realizing that the armor added up on its own after she gained consciousness. After reaching the prison of the Dark Knight, Yuzato wanted to heal her properly, guessing that her internals might be damaged from the attack. She couldn't help but wonder how the humans were using the healing magic against them as they are only able to use healing magic. She realized it was her fault to underestimate Yuzato for his abilities. All her pain was resolving inside her as if it had never existed in the first place, and the magic out of Yuzato felt so warm on her. She got out of the armor requesting him to keep his hand on her face as she didn't want to let go of the warmth. All she learned was the kindness coming out of Yuzato as she cried in pleasure. But on the other hand, Yuzato is still clueless about why the half-beast girl in the market showed him the vision even when the battle ended peacefully. On the way, he suddenly notices the girl and runs up to her. The little girl was surprised to see him alive and added that she wanted to collect the payment she needed for her mother. When she was about to explain what she was about to say, 
Suzun couldn't understand what was going on and got even more puzzled after listening to Yuzato about the vision she helped get through him. The girl introduced herself as a Marco, a fox of the beast folk, and she was curious to meet him after his healing magic. She claimed that she needed to show him the vision that he had seen to make him realize that the country was in great trouble. She wanted to make him understand that the country would be hopelessly getting destroyed without him. Suzun agreed with her as even she and Kazuki were saved by himself alone, and she was the only reason they got saved. The girl has the magic to foresee the future, and since the beast folk is looked down upon as a race by the others, she can't easily share her opinion with anyone. However, the country's no discrimination rule made her so impressed that she was looking for a way to save the country with the help of someone. A Marco reveals that her mother is sick in a weird way, as she keeps sleeping and doesn't wake up. Only a certain healing magic can wake her up, but she couldn't find anyone to do so, as she was discriminated against. Also, Rose was the person who was against her companions helping her since she could never trust her words, and Yuzato was the only person who looked like he would. The foreseeable vision revealed that he would save the country and even help her mother. As a Marco was the reason he could save the country and his friends simultaneously, he promised to help her. Yuzato leaves Suzun and a Marco while he gets out to get permission from the king, as Suzun focuses on her because of her cuteness. A Marco explains the situation to her more deeply as she is helpless if her mother doesn't wake up and adds that she can foresee the future in half a year or a whole year. The foreseeing ability is unique to her bloodline as she can do something like this and only her mother. When Yuzato reached Troes with the information, she felt quite problematic since mixing up with the beast folk could go sideways for them. The worst case scenario the country will face is going on a war against the beast folk, which they can't risk anyway. Rose made sure that she couldn't allow this to happen without the permission of the king, and he had to get some training to face any incoming danger to be fit for it. Meanwhile, Suzun was busily foreseeing the future to see what would happen soon as they would have to wait for the discussion with the king. The Marco was finally at peace as Yu Zeto was trying her best to help her escape the situation and he was also glad that she was the only reason the humans were saved. Everyone in the town is glad that Yu Zeto has saved them as they keep coming at him appreciating his existence as he gets outside with Suzun. The training with Rose begins again, but this time it isn't about healing magic anymore, and he will soon be able to heal more complicated conditions. This time they were about to train combat with each other, which would be their next step since the wounds affected by a curse will never be healed once he faces more impressive demons in the future. Learning how to dodge is necessary for him to complete, and he should take his pieces of training more seriously to face the enemy. He couldn't help but wonder how to dodge the attacks while getting punched by Rose to get him more used to it. When he wakes up from his unconscious state, Rose makes him go on for another round again as he keeps looking at her hopelessly, knowing that she will make him go through it no matter what happens. Finally, Yuzato gets up as his training in hell again begins for the betterment of the humans and the country. The story continues the next day when Usato is seen having a chat with the Black Knight, while she is forbidden to go outside as she is locked up in a jail cell-like place. It seems that Usato is talking about the captain to her, explaining the whole theory around her. He keeps on elaborating on the facts about her brutality. When it came to training, it just feels like he is there to train his toughness at this point, which feels like an uninteresting topic to talk about for her. She doesn't seem to realize why he would keep blabbering on his own like this, while she is vastly confused about what he is chasing after this whole time. When the situation gets directed toward his opinion, 
Usado ends up asking her what she would do, starting from her current point of view. Still, it is true that none of the things are in her grasp currently, so she isn't the one who can decide her fate. Usado seems to be in deep thought, and the Black Knight feels like he should just get away from her cell for a while, which he does as it seems like a favorable option for both of them. Usado seems distracted by her execution announcement, as he doesn't know what to make of it. Still, he knows that her death will not do any good to him, and he will hate that if it happens someday. At that moment, Kazuki was training in the garden, while Princess Saria was watching closely from afar, as she could notice that he had been trying his best to get better after the battle ended. When Saria and Kazuki start chatting, it gets interrupted by Usado. Kazuki starts asking him about his mission to head to the Beast Folk Nation to help that beast girl. Kazuki seems to be having positive vibes from the whole situation. Still, Usado points out that only the king will be deciding the final decision. Princess Saria listens to them and says that his request will most likely be granted, which makes Usado happy. It seems that their effort to win over their recent winning against the demon army has made a lot of amends on behalf of the kingdom. Even Kazuki realizes the potential of Usato, as it is quite believable that they would have been losing the fight without his assistance. Before leaving, Usato creates a messy situation for Kazuki by teasing him for the fact that he has been hiding from Saria, that he almost died on the battlefield. Usato gets into deep thought about doing something good for Amako, as he has to deliver the letter on his own, while the Black Knight is wondering what good she will do even if she gets out of the prison she is in right now. Also, some noticeable changes can be seen in her the moment she meets Usato. When she is busy thinking about him, Rose enters the room, which makes the Black Knight realize that she must be the captain Usato was talking about. Just upon entering the room, Rose claims that she will be given two choices in front of her. One of them is that she will continue to rot in prison, and another one is that she will be joining their side by fighting beside them like a good demon instead of an evil one. The situation changes in an instant. Rose begins tearing off all her armor by making a slight touch with her healing power, meaning that she must be stronger than Usato. She also says that since the king isn't really interested in finishing off someone, even if that person is a demon because people searching for revenge is a pain in the ass, Rose decides that she will be undertaking her demon manners course as soon as she closes off the mana stealing choker on her. The fate of the Black Knight gets sealed as Rose decides to beat her character into shape, and she soon meets up with Usato, who is busy training with his pet bear in the forest. While he is focused on running around, speaking out loud in his mind, he gets pulled back onto earth by the kick given by Rose, who is distressed by him not listening to her as she tells him to rest for one day. Soon he realizes whom Rose is carrying on her back, and he meets her eye to eye as she gets dropped on the ground by the captain. When Usato gets frustrated that she is present outside the prison, Rose points out that the demon folk is worth the effort in training. Since her magic is also sealed, she will be the one watching over her from then on. When Usato hears that the Black Knight is going to wear the mana blocking device on her, he is now relieved, and he knows what is about to come for her in the future. So he suggests she should start writing a diary each day, because she will be begging to get out of the hell she will be in soon enough. And she started writing a diary because of Usato, who pushed that onto her from day one. She began facing the wrath of Rose, which Usato had been facing for a long time, making it unbelievable for her, and making her feel like the prison was a better place for her. She couldn't help but wonder how someone like Usato got used around the captain, as none of the training she had to undergo was normal for a human to face. She started feeling like Usato might be a human and non-human, at the same time making it harder to explain. On day 9, she slacked off from her running only to find Rose and Usato fighting against each other to keep on strength training, which felt like she was seeing two titans fighting against each other. When Usato finally dodges the attack he was focusing on, excitement takes the better of him, and he gets kicked off again. As the girl was on the spot they were training for the day, Usato got the honor of keeping her under his own guidance from that day. He gets to know her name, Phelum, given by her parents. That night when the whole squad is having their dinner, Rose claims that the only way for Phelum to get better at the same pace is that they have to make her feel bad enough, which will help her to get better. Also, Rose states that Usato has to go to the cast the next day. He has to take Amako with him at the same time as the king is about to discuss his plans, which only makes Usato feel skeptical of what will come soon. The next day, Usato does as he is told to do so. 
he and Amako make their way to the king's castle, and the king finally tells them how they will progress next. The moment they present themselves in front of the king, Amako seems terrified for various reasons. The assembly starts, and the king informs everyone that he will need everyone's help in sending letters requesting the aid and cooperation of the other nations as the kingdom's chief minister, and the general has come to the conclusion that their recent battle with the demon army has cost them a lot more than ever. Also, if the kingdom rescue squad wasn't there, they would have been losing not only the war, but also, they would have lost their heroes as well. So, to take action about the whole incident, they will need to form an alliance with all the other nations to keep standing strong against the enemies. Their target is to start the letter delivery in 15 days, so they can reach as many nations as possible in the continent. Not only that, but also, the countries that refused to help them before, the letters shall be carried by notable people who can display a better resolve than most to convince them into an alliance. The duty falls onto Suzuni, Kazuki, and Usato, meaning their value is higher than all the others in the kingdom. The king apologizes for the trouble they will be facing. Still, Kazuki states that they will be obliged to hold on to their duty of saving the kingdom. Suzun seems quite excited to visit new places on the continent, but Usato is skeptical from the beginning, not realizing why the king would value him so much, even though he is just a healing magic user. When the assembly ends, the king surprises everyone by bowing down to Amako, as she has helped them graciously by lending her vision to Usato, which has saved everyone from destruction. He claims that he is ready to provide her with as much support as possible for him. Usato gets the duty to envoy the water nation Milark, which they will have to cross to reach the nation of the Beast Folk. The king leaves the duty of navigation to Alfie, a scholar currently employed by the kingdom, ready to do anything for the betterment. After checking the map, it seems that they will have to start their journey in the city of Magic Lukvis, and they will prioritize safety the most. Since Lukvis is the nation that is second to their nation in magic, their discrimination against the people and their magical abilities is heavenly. After that, Usato will have to reach Samaria, and finally, the beast folk nation for Amako. She has to be careful that they do not come face to face with the king, which is their top priority to be safe. The sense of danger lies everywhere, because not getting aid from those nations will hamper their future in every way possible, since they will have to fight against the demon army sooner or later. While traveling to the Beast Folk Nation, they must be careful as it had problems being enslaved or discriminated against in recent years. Hence, it is only normal for them to be quite wary of outsiders if they suspiciously enter the nation. Everyone suggests their circle must be small as they enter the nation. Usato suggests that he would like Ark to join their journey because of his wide knowledge of things. Amako seems more distressed than ever thinking of the nation of Lukvis, because there are academies for learning magic where there are more children than grown-ups. Even though it is heard that they have healers too, they are nowhere close to Usato and his abilities for meaningful reasons. Once Amako met one of them, she got the vision saying that neither of them would be able to help them with their cause anyways which sounded problematic to Usato. Usato meets to have a meeting with his captain, and notices that Phelim is carrying a heavy backpack to make their journey into the forest. Everyone has to undergo the same process if they join the Kingdom Rescue Squad, and Usato gets the duty of holding the fort for Rose until they return. On the other hand, Suzun meets Ark on her way as she is heading to his camp to talk to him about the Magic Academy in Lukvis, but Ark doesn't seem excited by any means. Ark states that even though it is a great place for learning magic, considering his abilities, he prefers to think that it does nothing great at all, even though all of the other guards in the kingdom think that he can become an imperial guard. More to Suzun's surprise, she is quite impressed to know that he has already chosen his escort for the journey as he made the right choice by selecting Ark. Before she is about to leave in peace, Ark states that Usado was heading toward the city earlier, where he is having a conversation with Olga. In the chamber, Usado decides to proceed through an experiment in which he tries to focus and concentrate the healing power to range it like Olga, but it ends up with him tearing up his hands. Olga notifies him that he shouldn't be doing something like that anymore, but the experiment ends up leaving so many questions unanswered to Usado. He knows that he will need to continue exploring from now on, so he can cure the illnesses of Amako's mother and heal the others faster. On his way, he soon meets Suzun who starts randomly discussing Ark's protagonist potential, which surprises Usato in many ways. 
When the public announcement about the letters was sent to each country, Usato continued training. At the same time, Ark came to spare his regards while the captain and Rose finished their expedition in the forest after ten long days. Time passes, and Usato is about to start its journey the next day. Still, he is nowhere satisfied with his magic training feeling as if it is impossible for him to reach his potential. It gets noticed by Rose, who praises him for his determination, and states that the power of healing gets stronger as the magic color gets darkened each time, making it more specialized. She also says that she was about to teach him the process herself. However, as there is still a risk that it will risk his safety, she felt it would be better for him to learn it later, not knowing that he would come up with the idea himself. Before taking her to leave, Rose states that as there are no tips to make the process better, he must continue to keep on trying, and also says that he must not hold himself up if he meets people who despise or look down on healing magic until they reach their sanity, revealing the quirky side of her once again. Rose left him motivated and puzzled simultaneously, not expecting she would put so much trust in him, setting up high expectations for him. When his master leaves and he gets busy thinking about the preparations he has to make the next day, Felim reveals herself from the trees, asking him questions about where he is about to go. When he keeps teasing her about her feeling lonely without him, Felim leaves the forest after feeling annoyed. The next day when it is time to take their leave, Usato prepares Bluey for their journey. At the same time, Amako hugs the woman she was staying with for one last time, as she believes that she might not even be able to come back once she reaches her motherland. Usato feels like something is missing in the whole setting, as Amako might not be telling him essential details about her role in the Beast Folk Nation. Usato and Amako make their way to the city, where they meet Ark and the others, including the heroes. A problematic situation comes up as soon as Ark claims that there is no way Bluey is going to get in the carriage, so he will have to ride him until they reach the end of their way. After getting inside the carriage, Usato notices that Wesley is also with them. Still, she will only stay with them until they reach Lukvis. Even though Rose wasn't there to bid them farewell, she was watching them from afar as they started making their way to their first destination. As it takes a week from the kingdom to reach Lukvis, they only encountered a few different types of demon beasts during their travel, but none of them were able to give them so much trouble because Bluey and Amako both were acting like their protection border from the beginning. Ark notices that Usato is deeply worried about his future days in the nation of Lukvis, so they decide to chat about Ark's days in the place they are about to go now. The main thing Ark worries about is the way the people of Lukvis discriminate against others with the support of the magic system at Lukvis. If that isn't enough, the nation is filled with racial discrimination. The whole subject of racial discrimination catches Usato off guard, as he could never believe that he would have to hear something so similar in the fantasy world. Ark adds that the whole nation might be against buying and selling of the demi-humans, but as they have to gather students from other continents, there will always be a vast number of people hating on the whole race painting it as the best and also the worst place to learn magic across the entire continent without a doubt. When Usato gets to know of the situation, he seems pretty upset. He decides to act neutral about the demi-humans, which proves to Ark that he is someone who treats the demi-humans as regular humans, keeping no border between them. At that moment, Amako leaves the room rubbing her eyes, stating that Suzune is the reason she wasn't able to sleep, because she continued to hug her while sleeping. Amako said she knew someone in Lukvis, and wanted Usato to also meet the person. Ark realizes that Amako feels relaxed whenever he is around, and leaves them both to guard their range so they can sleep peacefully. The next morning, Usato wakes up on Suzune's lap, making it look weird for him, and then realizes that Kazuki is the one who is responsible for that, as he didn't want Usato to wake up all of a sudden while sleeping. Soon, their eyesight fixes upon the road as soon as Ark makes an announcement, saying that Lukvis is just in front of them as they are about to make their arrival. Meanwhile, the students in the nearby Magic Academy continue to rush in front of their gate, assuming that the guests have arrived from the Lingal Kingdom with something about a letter from the monarch which gets noticed by a weird-looking youth. When they reach the main gate, Kazuki feels like the whole place looks like a school making it a whole lot different than the place they have been attending in real life. Soon, Elvis comes up to them with permission to enter, and they soon make their way into the city filled with magic. Before Elvis and Usato make their way to deliver the letters, he leaves the duty of watching over Bluey to Amako. 
It seems that most of the stores in the city are run by students making it look like some kind of part-time job in the real world. Soon, Usato realizes that Suzune is nowhere to be found. While looking for her, he stumbles upon someone who has eyes just like Amako's. As the person is wearing a hood, Usato feels like this might be the person she was talking about from the beginning. The whole thing gets underestimated by the woman under the hold, and she ends up gripping his hands with pure strength, making him worry that people more like his master exists in the world. The whole situation worsens as soon as Usato introduces himself by uttering the name of Amako, as she misunderstands that he can be someone who trades slaves for livelihood. Then it gets even worse when he claims that he is just a friend of Amako, which gets her more furious, thinking that no human can be a friend of a beast folk, considering the racial discrimination around her. She punches through the hands of Usato, getting him injured. But the moment he uses the healing magic, the whole situation kinds of cools down. The mysterious person runs away from the place as they are catching too much attention, and Usato thinks of delivering the letters instead of chasing after her. Usato notices Suzun, and they make their way to their final destination, where Usato gets startled by Halfa, appointed by their principal to guide them around the city. It gets brainstorming for Usato and the others when they realize that they know about them already, and not only that, but also some distinct details that someone cannot check out just by hearing them from someone else. Wesley makes a guess saying that Halfa must have been using the magic sight that can perceive the magical energy found within living beings and the air around them, making it look like Usato. He might be the same, except that Usato doesn't know how to use the magic sight. Usato realizes there must be something more behind Halfa than meets the eye. Suzune confirms his doubt by saying that Halfa must have been hiding something. Soon they reach the office of the principal, Gladys and it is revealed that Wesley is someone who has graduated from the place as well. Everyone introduces themselves, and upon the end of their discussion, they begin with the debate revolving around the coordination to fight against the demons. When the introduction ends, Gladys realizes that Usato is from the same squad as Rose's, and he is present in the nation himself to paint the urgency of the matter, which she noted. But there was still another issue. She could not make the decision alone so it was about to take more time than usual. When Halfa is called into the chamber to help them with their lodgings and school classes, Suzune gets most excited. Still, Usado tries to make the situation look easier than ever. The duty of watching over her gets handed over to Usado as she is about to cause more ruckus. As Usato is on his way to inform the others about their lodging location, he notices a nearby commotion revolving around a student lying down on the ground, presumably injured. But unfortunately, the situation isn't as easy as anyone might think. Usato realizes that the moment he notices that the kid doesn't have any injuries on them and that the kid is a healer himself makes, the situation becomes more complex than ever. On the other hand, Commander Amira of the Demon Army is getting lectured by the Demon King for the last blunder they had to face against the humans. Amira is ready to fall on her sword then and there for the failure they had to face since there is no justification for the trouble. But even the Demon King felt the surprising wrath of the humans, even though humans typically focus on money and temptations more than anything, considering the fact that the people of Lingle never change. Amira doesn't realize the punishment will be far different than what she was hoping for. She gets demoted from her position, only to overcome her failure once again to get promoted to commander soon. She is grateful to the Demon King for his kind words and promises once again to annihilate every enemy that will come to meet their eyes on the battlefield. Meanwhile, Usato gets recognized by the locals. He isn't from their city, because if he was from their local area, he would have supported bullying the kid that is lying down on the ground. He soon realizes that the people around the city are using the kid as a punching bag just because he has healing power and can heal anytime he wishes to recover. After waking up, the kid rushes away from Usato, and Usato starts walking in the direction of Ark, wondering if he can do anything about what he has witnessed today. When he reaches their location, Ark decides to take care of their goods in Bluey. At the same time, Usado and Amako can leave alone without worrying about anything. Usado gets concerned that he met someone so uncanny on his way to them. Still, before he is about to express anything to Amako, her anxiousness takes the better of her as she rushes into the direction of a dark alley. On their way, Usado feels like he will get attacked by the woman he met previously if that same person is the benefactor of Amako. They soon arrive in front of a rundown house, which makes the environment gloomy, 
as she considers the place quite convenient for them, which Usato seems to agree with, as nobody would like to come near some place like that. Usato claims that he will be fine waiting for her while she focuses on meeting the person that she is looking for, but she isn't ready to listen to him as Amako needs him in there with her. Amako notices that he might be hiding something, and Usato ends up spitting all the details in front of her, knowing that he will have to do it anyways, sooner or later. When he describes the person he met in the afternoon, Amako confirms that she is the person they are about to meet and decides to clear up the confusion by herself. Amako knocks on the door, revealing the exact monstrous figure of the mysterious woman he had met previously in the market. She shows herself carrying a broom to fight with him. When the situation doesn't improve even a bit, Usato thinks of using his healing punch that won't leave any injuries, but Amako stands in the middle of them, forbidding him to do so, and confronts him about it. The confrontation then clears up every confusion around the mysterious woman and Usado as she calms down after hearing Amako's voice. It seems that the mysterious woman's name is Kiriha, the person whom Amako was dying to meet from the beginning of their journey from Lingla. The moment the official introduction ends between them, Kiriha bows down in front of Usato to ask for his forgiveness for misunderstanding him. Amako tries to monopolize the situation by claiming that he might be scary, but he is kinder than most and Usato elaborates that she doesn't have to ask for his forgiveness, as he isn't even hurt in the first place. When the topic of healing magic gets into the conversation, Kiriha brings up the topic of the same boy whom Usato met before coming with Amako. Then, when he keeps on gazing at Kiriha to find out what kind of animal she might be, Amako notices that and calls him rude for doing that unpleasantly. Usato and Kiriha officially introduce each other after that and shake hands with the hope of friendship from then on. Kiriha realizes that she is in the middle of making dinner because her brother is about to come home soon, and she wants them to stay for dinner as a part of an apology. Usato was wondering if it will be better for him to stay in there as her brother was coming, but when Amako questions him about it, he decides to stay with her. Soon the brother comes in wondering if Usato is the person who broke down the door, but the situation gets cleared up by Amako, who then reveals herself from behind him. Q is the brother of Kiriha and he is shocked after meeting Amako so suddenly, even though he thought she might not even be alive when they last met. Amako introduces Usato as a friend, making him realize he is the fragile guy who will help her with the healing power she seeks. Also, Kiriha elaborates on the fact that Usato is different from the other healers at the academy. Q seems to have a hard time believing the words coming out of their mouths as he keeps staring at them in disbelief. Usato realizes that the guy doesn't like him even a bit, making him wonder what the reason might be. He thinks that there is a possibility that he likes Amako, but he then focuses his mind on thinking that it just might be like that because he is a human. When Usato compliments the soup that was made by Kiriha, she elaborates that this might be her first time getting complimented by some human, but Kiyu isn't ready to accept him as the person Amako and Kiriha think of him. Usato claims that he might be leaving Amako with them until he finishes his duties in the city to keep her safe, since he will be drawing attention from the townspeople. But Kiriha makes the situation favorable for Amako, as she knows she might not be interested in living away from Usato. He ends up accepting the offer, even though Kyu is skeptical of him for doing something like that, and decides to contact the inn later, where they are about to stay, and Amako seems happy with that. It reminds her of the past when Amako was trying her best to look for a healer, despite Kiriha never wanting her to keep searching. The reason they started living in the city of Lukvis started working against their will, as they found out that even though the persecution of the beast folk has been forbidden, the rate of racial discrimination never let them live in peace. Not only that, but also the fact that the humans make up most of the population that bully the beast folk painted Kiriha as an idiot, as she was expecting one of them to help her in their cause. Also, the stuff she said to Q about Amako doesn't make her trust Usado any better because Kiriha doesn't feel she can trust him properly. When Kiriha and Kyo leave for their classes, Amako and Usato also leave to meet their friends back in the inn. Just upon their return, Suzun states that she would love to accompany them, but Usato tries his best to avoid having the conversation for peace. Also, Kazuki claims that they have been invited by the school principal, and he wants to meet her together in the academy. Even though Usato is skeptical about leaving Amako alone with Bluey and Ark, Suzun seems quite excited to meet the principal to learn what classes at a magic academy are like. Just upon their arrival in the academy, 
they all get greeted by Halfa, who is waiting for them and is eager to show them around his classes. When they enter the academy, they all stumble upon the seniors performing a joint training session with the juniors. Halfa wanted to know if they are also interested in joining them. Usato meets Kiriha and Q eye to eye, which is noticed by Halfa. He is surprised that they didn't harm him, as everyone who tries to get acquainted with them gets hurt in the end. Suzun tried her best to convince Usato to introduce her to them, but he decided to avoid the confrontation. When the introduction in the training hall starts with the help of Halfa, one of the students recognizes him from the crowd as he points out, stating that he has seen Kiriha punching him the previous day. When one of the students wanted them to demonstrate their strength in magic, Suzun raises her hand with approval, which leaves Usato and Kazuki puzzled as they are skeptical of her when it comes to holding back. The demonstration of strength goes the way they hoped it would go as she turns the training dummy into ashes. Kazuki goes after that when the show finishes. Instead of going for weapons, he chooses only a certain kind of ranged magic that surprises everyone because it is impressive. The students do not leave Usato from questioning. The moment he introduces himself as a healing mage, the crowd starts making fun of him in that instant, calling him a shitty mage. Mina from the noble Liasya family decides to fight against him, thinking she might win against him easily, as he is one of the healing mages who fought against the demon army. Instead of leading her to the mock battle, Halfa himself decides to participate so that Usato can show everyone his true potential, knowing that he is the only one who can match against him. Q comes up to Usato, claiming that he should call off the mock battle as soon as possible since he doesn't want anything to happen to him, and Halfa isn't all nice as he looks. Usato wasn't ready to lose to anyone as long as he was wearing the uniform of the Kingdom Rescue Squad, knowing that he would get his ass beaten by the captain. His friends continued to cheer him up as soon as the battle began. Usato decides not to take on a weapon in his hands, and Suzun gets the duty of giving the signal, whilst Kiriha and Kyo stand afar worrying about Usato. As soon as the battle begins, Halfa instantly charges against him. Still, his opponent manages to dodge at the right time, surprising him. Usato is surprised to see his opponent this fast, as he has never fought against someone like him who existed outside the Kingdom Rescue Squad. It keeps getting hard for Usato to keep reading his moves as his aim is insane, making it harder than it looked for him. Knowing that the situation isn't improving even a bit, Usato starts fighting head-on with him while healing his hands simultaneously to avoid getting injured in the first place, which surprises Halfa. When he tears through the muscle of Usato, he decides to activate the healing protection over his whole body. He makes an overpowering punch to Halfa's stomach quite instantly. Everyone present around the whole venue was surprised to see the ability of Usato, even though he is someone who is a mere healing mage, including Mina, as she couldn't hold her anger bottled inside her. Halfa claims this might be the first time he felt he might die soon, but he was lucky enough to block his attack with something. Even though Halfa isn't ready to accept his loss, he stands on his feet again with both weapons in his hands, claiming that Usato's strength sincerely fascinated him, which he never anticipated would happen. The sole reason why he isn't ready to allow others to make fun of him while Usato keeps on thinking breaking his weapon might have been a mistake for him. Finally, Halfa is fully motivated to fight against him with his full strength after testing out the difference in their strength, while feeling bad for Usato for forcing him to fight against him. Then Usato is suddenly surprised when Halfa claims that provoking him into a fight is merely a job for him that cannot be avoided at any cost, as he doesn't have a proper explanation.